Ever wondered how your favorite morning ritual, the delightful cup of coffee, came into existence? The story begins in the highlands of Ethiopia with a humble goat herder named Kaldi. Legend has it that Kaldi noticed his goats behaving unusually frisky after munching on the berries from a certain tree. Intrigued, he sampled the berries himself and felt an unaccustomed surge of energy. News of the dancing goats and their magical berries spread quickly, catching the attention of a local monastery. Monks there experimented with the berries, brewing a bitter liquid that kept them alert during long hours of prayer. The discovery was too good to keep secret, and soon it traveled beyond Ethiopia, reaching the Arabian Peninsula. In the Islamic world, coffee was embraced as a wine of Araby, a welcome alternative to alcohol, which was prohibited. Mosques began to serve coffee to worshippers, and coffee houses or kave kane sprung up in cities across the Middle East, and thus the journey of coffee from a simple berry to a beloved beverage began. But how did this exotic drink make its way around the world, you may wonder? Well, the journey of coffee from a simple berry to a beloved beverage is quite an intriguing tale. In the 15th century, coffee houses known as kave kane began to pop up in cities across the Near East. These establishments were much more than just places to enjoy a hot cup of coffee. They were social hubs, places to engage in conversation, listen to music, watch performers, play chess, and keep up to date with the latest news. Coffee became the drink of choice for these gatherings, and its popularity began to spread like wildfire. By the 17th century, coffee had made its way to Europe. It was here that coffee began to replace the common morning drinks of the time, beer and wine, Yes, you heard that right. Imagine starting your day with a pint or a glass of wine. However, coffee offered a much needed alternative. It was a drink that woke people up instead of slowing them down. But like all great things, coffee was met with its fair share of controversy. It was new, it was foreign, and it had a bitter taste that was unlike anything the Europeans were used to. Some even went so far as to call it the bitter invention of Satan. The fear and mistrust were so great that coffee had to be tasted by the Pope himself before it could be accepted by the people. Despite the initial resistance, coffee had come to stay. It had survived the test of time and the scrutiny of the masses. It had proven itself not as a devil's brew, but as a beverage that could bring people together, inspire creativity, and start the day on a positive note. And so, coffee began its reign as the drink of choice for millions around the world. From the bustling coffee houses of the Near East to the elegant cafes of Europe, coffee had made its mark. Its journey, however, was just beginning. Despite the initial resistance, coffee had come to stay. And stay it did, in our hearts, our homes, and our history. Coffee, though, was not content with conquering just one continent. It had its sights set on the New World, and oh, what a journey it was. In the mid-17th century, coffee first made its way to New Amsterdam, a place you and I know better as New York. The city, bustling with energy, was an ideal setting for this invigorating brew. Yet it was not an immediate hit. The settlers were still clinging to their traditional beverages. But then, in the late 18th century, an event occurred that would forever change the American beverage landscape. The Boston Tea Party, a political protest against the British rule, led to a dramatic shift in preference from tea to coffee. The dark, aromatic brew suddenly became a symbol of freedom, an act of defiance against the British love for tea. Meanwhile, south of the New World, coffee found fertile ground in the Caribbean and Latin America. The tropical climate and rich soil were the perfect environment for coffee cultivation. The crop thrived and soon coffee plantations spread across the region like wildfire. Jamaica's Blue Mountain, Brazil's vast coffee estates and Colombia's high-altitude farms became synonymous with high-quality coffee. This was a time of immense change. Coffee was no longer just a beverage, it was a booming industry, a cash crop, and a crucial part of the economy. Plantations were bustling, ports were busy, and coffee houses were the center of social and political discourse. The New World had embraced coffee with open arms, and coffee in return had transformed the New World. It had weathered political storms, adapted to new climates, and found its way into the hearts and homes of millions. In the face of adversity, coffee stood victorious. Coffee isn't just a drink, it's a culture, with countless variations worldwide. Each cup tells a story, each sip a testament to the diversity of flavors, brewing methods, and traditions that make up the world of coffee. Let's start with the types. There's the robust and full-flavored espresso, 
the rich and creamy cappuccino, the smooth and balanced Americano, and many others. Each type has its own unique taste profile and preparation method. But the best coffee in the world? That's a matter of personal preference. Some swear by the rare earthy Kopi Luwak from Indonesia, others favor the sweet fruity geisha from Panama. And who's sipping all this coffee? Well, Finland tops the list as the country with the highest coffee consumption per capita. They've embraced coffee as part of their daily life, savoring it in the morning, during work breaks and in social gatherings. On the other end of the spectrum, you'll find countries like Nepal, where tea is the preferred beverage and coffee consumption is relatively low. But what about the advantages and disadvantages of coffee consumption? On the bright side, coffee is packed with antioxidants, can boost your physical performance and may even protect against certain diseases. It's also a beloved companion for many, providing comfort, focus, and sometimes the motivation to get out of bed in the morning. However, like all good things, it's best enjoyed in moderation. Excessive coffee drinking can lead to insomnia, an upset stomach, or an increased heart rate. And let's not forget the dreaded caffeine withdrawal headache. From the Ethiopian plateau where it was first discovered to the bustling cafes of Helsinki, coffee has journeyed across continents, evolving and adapting along the way. It's been vilified and celebrated, used as a social lubricant, and even as a currency. Coffee, it seems, has as many facets as there are people who enjoy it. But what about coffee today? Well, let's dive right into the heart of it. The coffee industry has blossomed into a behemoth, with countless companies vying for the top spot. But a few stand out from the crowd. Take Starbucks, for instance, an American company that has become synonymous with coffee worldwide. Then there's Italy's Lavazza, renowned for its high-quality espresso. And we can't forget Ethiopia's Sidamo Coffee Farmers Cooperative Union, which produces some of the world's most flavorful beans. Now, let's take a sip and travel to the most famous coffee spots around the globe. There's the charming Café Tortoni in Buenos Aires, where you can enjoy your brew surrounded by a rich history. Or the cozy Fazl Bey Turkish coffee in Istanbul, where you can experience the traditional Turkish coffee ritual. And then there's the sleek blue bottle coffee in Tokyo, which blends Japanese minimalism with a passion for quality brew. But coffee isn't just a morning pick-me-up or an afternoon delight. It's versatile, finding its way into skincare products where its antioxidants help rejuvenate the skin. It's even used in gardening with coffee grounds helping to enrich the soil. As we wrap up our journey, let's spill some coffee beans of wisdom. Did you know that coffee is the second most traded commodity on earth right after oil? Or that it was the goat herders of ancient Ethiopia who first discovered its energizing effect? And here's a fun one. The world record for the longest coffee break is a whopping 88 hours. Just imagine the caffeine rush. So, there you have it. From a humble berry in Ethiopia to a global phenomenon, coffee has come a long way. Its rich history, varied uses, and the sheer joy it brings make it a fascinating topic. Whether you're a casual drinker or a connoisseur, there's always something new to learn about coffee. So, the next time you sip your coffee, remember it's not just a beverage, it's a sip of history. Yes, indeed. This humble drink, born from the cherries of a tree in Ethiopia, has traveled across continents and centuries. It fueled the intellectual fires of the Enlightenment, kept soldiers awake in wars, and even sparked a revolution or two. From its early beginnings to the dizzying array of varieties we enjoy today, coffee's journey mirrors our own human saga in many ways. The world's love for coffee is universal yet diverse. Some countries can't start their day without it while others enjoy it less frequently. It has health benefits, yes, but it has its drawbacks, too. And let's not forget, it's an industry that has shaped economies, from small farms to multinational corporations. Here's to the humble coffee bean that has not just kept the world awake, but also shaped its history in countless ways.